next Wednesday. Now, we did not finish 1.1, so we're going to kind of pick up where we left off in 1.1. First of all, anybody have any questions so far? Everybody's kind of, yes. When I was the copy, the print, I couldn't find the blank one. Okay. The blank ones? Yeah, I emailed you the blank copy of just the chapter one, but if you go into content, and our question was, where are the blank um, notes. Okay, this is what the notes from this semester, that is what I post um, after we do class today. And then the previous semester is what I've done in the past. So it's going to be right here, class notes, blank notes. Okay. So if you go there, I took, it, and then you have to click it again. I have posted everything out there. So this would be the chapter one, and I took everything else out and just put the new stuff. For those of you who went out there to get print right there, mm -hmm. okay. So this is so we've done the first few pages. So we now are on this page, and it just has it's exactly what I have, and then you can go in and fill in the pages, and hopefully we'll save you some time. Thank you. Hopefully we'll save you some time. So it's under the button that says um, blank class notes. Does that help? All right, any other questions? So when we talked last time about 1.1, we talked about a sample. A sample is the people who actually answer the question. The population is the all, okay? And we said statistics is when we have a problem, an issue, and we want to gather data. We want to interpret that data. We want to look at that data and then come up with some answers. So we have a problem. Here is our raw data. Our raw data is just the, the stuff. And then we want to take that raw data and we want to organize it. So in this problem, we took our raw data and we turned it into a frequency table. In our frequency table, we just came up with numbers and we said how many numbers go here, how many numbers go here. So we take our data and we organize it into a frequency table. And then after we did that, we said we want to make it pretty, okay? So to make it pretty, we took this data and we put it into a chart. So class number one was between here and here and they had six people. So class number one had six people. Class number two had two people. So class number two had two people. Class number three had three people. So this chart and this graph are exactly the same thing. It's just two different ways to show it. So all three of these are exactly the same thing. This is just listing it. This is doing it in a table, and this is doing it in a cute picture. So then we started at the end of class, and some of you were already in that blank stare I'm already done with today. So I kind of wanted to go back over again. The first question says, what percent had reaction times less than 348? So if I look at this one, I don't have 348 down here. I don't know what class 1 was and what class 2 was and what class 3 was. So this isn't going to help me much. I want to know how many, what percent of the people had less than 348. So this one's not going to help me. So I'm going to go look at the other two. 348. Now, if I come here, I could do this one and say that's less than 348, that's less than 348, and I could count. Or I've kind of already done it here. Here's my 348. So the ones that are less than 348 are going to be those two. Go with me? So there are eight people that are less than 348. Well, I don't want to know how many people, I want to know what percent. So there's two ways we can do it. And it doesn't matter to me how, which way you do it. And I'm going to erase this for just a second, and I'm going to show you both ways that we can do it. So do we all agree that there are eight people less than 348? Are we all good on that one? And we use the frequency table to get that. 
Now, we need to turn 8 into a percentage. Now, some of us like to use part over whole equals percent over 100. If we do that, 8 is going to be my part. 8 is the part that's less than 348. What is my whole? My whole is going to be 30. That's the whole number of people I surveyed. That's the whole number of people I asked. So 30 is going to represent my whole. And percent is what I'm trying to find. So the percent is what I don't know. <coughs> now, what we want to do next is we want to cross multiply. So you're going to multiply the two numbers that are diagonally across from each other. So we're going to do 30 times x and then 8 times 100. So that's going to give me 30x equals 800. 30 times x, 8 times 100. So 30x equals 800. And then we're going to divide both sides by 30. 26.66, is that what we said last time? 26.666666. Mm -hmm. That's one way to do it. Okay? The other way to do it is to say, okay, eight people out of 30 had the reaction time of less than 348. That is a fraction. I want to turn that fraction into a percentage. We learned how to do this when we did that little chart last time. How do you turn a fraction into a percentage? Well, percentage is yelling what? Woo woo. Woo -woo. Well, what do you have to have to woo woo? A decimal. So you've got to turn a fraction into a decimal to get your woo-woo ball. So how do you turn a fraction into a decimal? How do we turn a fraction into a decimal? Divide. We divide it. So we go to our calculator and we do 3 divided by 8. And that gives me my decimal, 0.375. We're not done because all we did was turn our fraction into a decimal. I now have to take that decimal and turn it into a percent. So, I pick up my decimal and I whoop whoop it which way? To, where's my whoop whoop on? Where's the whoop whoop? Where's the two dots? On which side? The whoop whoop is on the... Right? So if I, hold on. Hold on. A over. Go to my calculator. Oh, huh, I can't type at 8 o'clock in the morning. 8 divided by 30. There we go. There it is. Point two six 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 six. I'm like, that's not the right answer. Okay, now, when I get my whoop whoop on, which way am I going to whoop whoop? To the right, because that's, that's where my two decimals are. Move this down where I've got a little bit of room. So it's point two six 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 six, and I'm going to whoop whoop to the right, and that's going to give me my 26.66666%. Those are exactly the same. I don't care how you do it. So if you want to do it as a part over whole, or if you want to say, I want to turn my fraction into a decimal and then get my whoop whoop off. Same exact thing. You just got to type in the calculator, right? 8 o'clock in the morning. <coughs> Are we good? All right. Females with reaction times greater than 400 will be giving training to speed up their times. Based on this sample, what percentage of females will need this training? So this time we're doing 400 or more. Can we get our data off of this? No, because do we see 400? No, okay. So if I go to the next one, is it gonna be easy to get our data off of here? Let me ask again. Is it gonna be easy to get our data off of here? Let me ask again. No. Why? Because 400 is not a good stopping point. 348 was a good stopping point. 400 is in the middle of that class. You with me? 
So I don't know of these five numbers, I don't know which ones are greater than 400 and which ones are less than 400. Here it was easy because I knew that all those numbers were 348 and higher and all of those were less than 348. But 400, I can't tell, so I can't get it off of here. I'm going to have to be old school and get it off here. I want to know the ones that are less than 400. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, so for this one, we had to go all the way back to the raw data. <coughs> so we had to go raw data for this one. So it was 16. I count right. Mm -hmm. Greater than, y'all, I'm not awake this morning. Greater than 400. Oh. Mm -hmm. Woo, let's see. Greater than 400. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That's what's going to get you on your homework, too. So 14 or greater. What's my bottom number going to be? <coughs> 30. Very good. My bottom number is 30 because that's my total. Do y'all want to do it as part over whole or do y'all want to do it as fraction decimal percent? Does it matter or we'll get the same answer? What floats y'all's boat? Okay, so um, Sarah said she wants to go fraction into decimal into percentage. So to turn the fraction into a decimal, what do we have to do? Divide. So we go to our calculator, 14 divided by 30. Now, we're not done, y'all. All we did was turn it into a decimal. They want a percentage. So my decimal is 0.46666. We now have to take that decimal and turn it into a percentage. Pick up your decimal and whoop, whoop, which way? To the right. To the right. So whoop, whoop. So what is my answer going to be? 46.66666%. Now, if you did it as part over whole equals percent over 100, it would be 14 over 30 equals percent over 100. So then you would do um, 30x equals 1400, divide both sides by 30. You're still going to get the 46.6%. Cool? All right, I'm going to take this last problem right here and I am going to copy it and put it a little bit lower so I can have a little bit more room. I don't like how these are spaced out. Now, before I do this next problem, I'm going to stop doing it. Cut. Before I do this next problem, I want to do one that's kind of similar. Remember when we did um, the index cards on the first day? And let's say um, I surveyed 25 of my stat students. And 22 said they have um, a cell phone. How many FDTC students, let's say there's 4,000, should have an, uh, a cell phone? So based on what y'all say, how many should have a cell phone? Because I can't do a census of the whole school. I can't ask everybody. So based on what y'all say, I can say, okay, if my stat students have a cell phone, I'm going to take their data and I'm going to assume that the whole population is going to have similar statistics. 
So if 22 out of 25 of y'all have a cell phone, I want to know how many of the school has a cell phone out of 4,000. How would I go about setting that up? Any clue? Got the Okay, 22 over 25. Perfect start. Next. Excellent. Easiest way to think about this is you do your sample and you do your population. And really you're doing part over whole for each one. So I'm saying for my sample, the people that I asked, 22 had a cell phone out of 25 total people I asked. And for my population, all of tech, how many had a cell phone out of how many are in all? So this is going to be my sample, which is the stats class. And this is going to be all of FDTC. And the part is going to be who has the phone. And the bottom is going to be the total people. So 22 out of 25 had a cell phone. How many out of 4,000 are going to have a cell phone? Part over whole equals part over whole. And then you're going to do your cross multiplication. So I'm going to do 25 times x. And then I'm going to do 22 <coughs> times 4,000. So that's 25x equals 88,000. And then I'm going to divide by 25. So when I bring my calculator up, it's going to be 88,000 divided by 25. So this is telling me that if 22 of y'all had a cell phone out of 25, then I should expect 3,520 people out of the 4,000 FDTC students to have a cell phone. Does that make sense? Stats people use this all the time. They take our data and they say, let me ask a couple people and see what they say. And I'm going to take that information and I'm going to infer it to the whole population. Now, taking this problem, we're going to go back to the previous problem. I just wanted to use something that, that we had already talked about, something that you knew. Now, if I go back, are you all good for me to go back? If I go back to this problem, it says, if 1,200 females will be tested for reaction times, how many females should we expect to need the, tra the training? So, right here, we've done the females that we expect to need the training. Oops, it wasn't the previous one. How many females should we expect to need the training? So, these are the females that we expect to need the training, which was the previous problem, which was the 14 out of 30. Those are the ones from our sample. This is our sample part of our whole. So what is our population going to be? So if 14 out of 30 is our sample, what is our population? What's the total? 1,200. And what do we want to know out of that 1,200? The part. So this is saying we asked 30 people and 14 scored 400 or higher. We want to know if we tested 1,200 people, how many are going to make that score? We tested 30, 14 made it. If we test 1,200, how many are going to make it? You with me? We're going to do our cross multiplication. So tell me what I'm going to multiply. 30x equals 14 times 1,200. 30x equals 14 times 1,200. Somebody with a calculator, what is 14 times 1,200? 16,800. And then we're going to divide both sides by 30. Does that give me? Uh, 
So if we test 1,200 people, we should expect 560 people to make the cut, to make the time. Now, this is called inferential statistics. Inferential statistics means we look at the sample to infer what's going to happen to the population. Will this always happen? No. I may have had a stats class that was kind of cuckoo and only three people had a cell phone. I mean, that's not the general population. But inferential statistics is we're saying that if y'all are normal people, <coughs> y'all are going to be representative of what the population is. So y'all infer what the whole group is going to do. That's what we inferential statistics means. We good so far? All right, sampling. How do we ask the people that we're going to ask to do our sample? Like, how am I going to ask y'all to answer questions? There's voluntary, which means um, y'all have to, like, when I ask y'all to um, answer those index cards, that wasn't voluntary. I handed it out and said, do it. On the way to school this morning, some of y'all were listening to the radio, and they said, okay, call in and answer blah, 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 or go to my website and type in blah, blah, blah. That's voluntary because you have to make the effort to pick up your phone, to go to the website, to fill out something, that's voluntary. So voluntary means that you have to make the effort to do something to fill it out. Okay? Um, a radio show asks you to call in information. In the parking lot, they put something on your windshield and ask you to fill it out and mail it in. You've got to do something. That's voluntary. Most of us are lazy. We don't want to do it. Okay? Non-response, that's under coverage. Um, Y'all get these all the time. They'll send you an email and say, fill it out. FTTC, they send you an email to 4,000 students and 14 people respond. That's not going to give a good sample. That's not going to be very representative because not that many people filled it out. Um, we've already talked about consider the source. Um, this is saying that if you eat a lot of chocolate, it's going to be good for you. Look who wrote it. The Mars Candy Bar Company. So they're going to tell you that it's good because they're making the candy bars. So consider the source. Just like the tobacco company telling you that smoking is going to be good for you. So that one's a consider the source. Um, loaded questions. Please be careful of loaded questions. Um, loaded questions is when they, and let me read this um, one or two. Um, do you support the development of aut uh, atomic weapons that could kill millions of innocent people? If I would have just stopped it here and said, do you support the develop development of atomic weapons? You may have answered it totally different than if I would have added that could kill millions of innocent people. They're adding extra words to help sway your decision making. Um, According to um, swimming pools and spas can be very dangerous for children. 163 children drowned during the summer of 2017. Do you think all pool owners should be required to have a lifeguard certification? I could have just said, do you believe that lifeguards should be in all pools? But for me, adding all that other stuff, you're like, oh, let me think a little bit differently about this. That's loaded questions where they're putting in more information to make you think about swaying your answer to the way that they want to be. Okay? Um, this happened, do I have any Darlington County people? You are all young though. Um, back in the day, like when I was a lot younger, mm -hmm. Darlington County came and said, do y'all want to pay less taxes? We're like, sure. Well, they, they told us, you know, they kind of did it loaded, but in a roundabout way. They said, do y'all want to pay less taxes and da 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 Well, come to find out, they really didn't tell us everything, but they told us what they wanted us to hear so we would answer the question the way they wanted. And it ended up that to pay less taxes, we had to buy these yellow trash bags. And we had to put all of our trash in these yellow trash bags. And the way they figured out, that was how we paid our taxes. 
that the more money you made, the more trash you had, and the more trash bags you bought. And these flimsy yellow trash bags, so you had to buy a hefty trash bag to put inside a yellow trash bag to take to the dump. And these trash bags were like $1.25 a piece. Yeah, crazy. But that's how they were getting their taxes. So it wasn't that we were not paying taxes, we were paying it a different way. And they did the same thing with like Obamacare. You know, do you want to have free health care? They don't tell you everything. Um, same thing down here. What can do, uh, be done to students to eat healthier foods? Now, if I come down and read um, mandatory nutrition, offer only healthy foods, offer more healthy foods, you can have open questions and you can have closed questions. I like D. On a scale of one to five, with five being very happy, how happy are you with where you're living? How happy are you with the car you drive? How happy are you with your current employment status? On a scale of one to five, how happy are you overall? If four was written first, would you have answered them differently? So if I would have written, how happy are you overall? And then started asking, how happy are you with your car? How happy are you? You may have answered totally different. So you've got to think about, you know, how are the questions written? How are they worded? Statisticians can make things worded to make you think what you want to think and to make them answer the way that you want them to answer. E, oh my goodness, reported data versus measured data. data. If somebody says, what is your weight? Are you asking me or are you telling me to get on scales? <laughs> it's going to be two different things. None of your business. <laughs> None of your business is right. So if I'm telling you, it's going to be one number. But if I'm getting on a set of scales, it's going to be a different number. Okay? So, again, answers are going to vary according to how it's written. All right, time for a little more math. A polling company, somebody who just calls and asks questions, reported that 53% of 1,013 people surveyed said that pesticides are harmful. Complete parts A through D. So what is the exact value of 53% of 1030? So if you saw this question, how would you go about answering this? More than one way. How would you do 53% of 1030? How would you do it? Besides skip it. Is over of. I had a good math teacher last semester. This is screaming is over of. This is your percent. This is your of. Okay? So if it were me, I would do it as an is over of question. So I would do is over of equals percent over 100. This is your percent. This is next to the word of. And then it says what is. So that means your is is what you don't know. So what is 53% of 1013 and your percent is always over 100. And you're going to do exactly what we did before. You're going to do your cross multiplication. So 100x equals 53 times 1013, and then you're going to divide both sides by 100. So 53 times 1013 divided by 100. So for my first problem, I'm going to get an answer of 536.89. Now, that's not the only way that you could have done this problem. I have other people who do this as what I call a shortcut. The shortcut, 53% of 1013. This is the shortcut. What does the word of mean in math? Do we know? Add, subtract, multiply, divide. Oh, we'll take two. Multiply. Multiply. If you whoop whoop the percent and multiply, you get the same thing. That's another way to do it. Now, I show both of these. Okay, is over of always works. 
Is over of will always work. Percent of a number only works if it says percent of a number. You woot woot the percent and of means multiply. You don't woot woot if it's an is over of. So your question is to woot woot or not to woot woot. That is the answer. So you do not woot woot if you're plugging it in for a percentage. You do woot woot if you're doing a um, shortcut. But those are going to give you the same thing. So it says, what is the exact answer, 536.89?